the O'Connor system was based on bribes. Uh, it was three decades of bribes paid to judges, prosecutors, O'Connor himself, senators, governors. Um, so it was based on corruption sealed with illicit cash. The great thing about St. Paul is it was literally a Walmart for crooks. If you needed a getaway car, you could buy a fully outfitted bank robber's getaway car in St. Paul. The best Tommy guns in America were flown from Texas to St. Paul and sold on Wabasha Street near the Green Lantern Saloon. Tom Brown easily was the most corrupt cop in the history of St. Paul. I don't think O'Connor um, imagined that a cop could actually fuse the underworld and the overworld together in St. Paul. But that's what Tom Brown did. Tom Brown was the head of the kidnap squad. Um, the idea of the St. Paul Police Kidnap Squad was they would identify those millionaires in St. Paul who were likely to be kidnapped and then protect them. But Tom Brown had a different idea. Uh, he decided to identify the rich men in St. Paul and then finger them, point them out to the Barker Carpus gang so they could be kidnapped for ransom. The Barker Carpus gang robbed a bank in Minneapolis, the third Northwestern National Bank, um, in December of 31, I believe. And an innocent bystander walked over to the Barker Carpus gang's car, which had sprung a flat tire after the bank robbery, and said, excuse me, can I help you change the tire? And I believe it was Freddie Barker picked up a machine gun and blew this, I think it was a 20 year old, newly married young guy, blew him away. Uh, it didn't have to, he just liked to kill. Carpus liked to make money. He didn't like to kill people, he liked to make money. Uh, I think Carpus, Alvin Creepy Carpus, was disturbed at how easily Freddie in particular, but Freddie and Doc Barker, like to kill. Fred Ziegler, who had been part of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre team uh, that shot the Bugs Moran gang from Capone, um, it seems that he was involved in the planning of the kidnapping of William Hamm for uh, $100,000 ransom, and then mo may have been involved in the kidnapping of Ed Bremer as well. The detective work that the FBI did when uh, Ed Bremer was finally released after being kidnapped by the Barker Carpus gang, the FBI learned from Bremer the design of the wallpaper in the room that Bremer had been held at in Bensonville, Illinois. And then they tracked down, not hundreds, but thousands of samples of wallpaper, identified the wallpaper that the gang had in their safe house, and then found out who bought the wallpaper. None of the ransom money from the two kidnappings in 33, 1933 and 1934 was ever recovered. Carpus, when he went into prison, had much of the bank loot and kidnap money, his portion of the illicit cash, put in a bank in Duluth. And when Carpus got out of prison decades later, an old man, sick, broken, he went to the bank uh, two other banks also, but Duluth was one of them, took out all the money from the 1930s that had been growing with full interest. And Carpus went to Torremolina, Spain, where he was seen eating the best food, steak, uh, fine wine. He had a girl under one arm and another girl under another arm. Uh, he lived it up uh, with the money that he had stolen when he was a young man. And then one night in Spain, he took an overdose of sleeping pills and took his own life. I didn't leave a note. We have no idea why Carpus killed himself, but it's probably because he had had his fun. As far as the Dillinger gang, uh, the, the FBI got involved relatively early uh, because again, we're talking about a Dillinger gang that would take out a submachine gun and blow apart three city blocks. The FBI couldn't ignore that. And the local police were helpless because the Dillinger gang was multi-state inherently. Um, so if you're the uh, Oklahoma police, you can't chase Dillinger to Minnesota. I have to admire the FBI for the role that they played with the Barker Carpus gang and the John Dillinger gang in the 1930s. Um, they were outgunned 
Uh, they had very limited powers between states. Congress hadn't changed the law yet. The Dillinger gang had better machine guns than the FBI did. Uh, and the FBI had to deal with not being able to trust the St. Paul police. The, the people of St. Paul and the police of St. Paul tolerated the O'Connor system for almost three decades. If it hadn't been for the FBI, as troublesome as the FBI was, um, it would have continued another decade.